1 Corinthians 4 verse 7 says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. This verse, amongst others, tells us that mysteries exist. Many people don't believe in anything mysterious and try to explain everything with science. Even believers of the gospel have fallen into this trap. They try to see Jesus more scientifically. They tend to reject some of the things that happen in the Bible because it doesn't make sense to them. This is very wrong. We have to accept the whole counsel of God. We have to accept every truth that has been given to us through Scripture. We cannot decide what we want to believe and what we don't. As true Christians, we must believe everything the Word of God tells us. One of the things it says is that there are indeed mysteries. There are things we cannot explain whether we try to. Some things will be beyond our physical reasoning and thus beyond our mind's comprehension. These are called spiritual mysteries, and there are many examples in the Bible. For example, 1 Timothy 3 verse 16 says, And without controversy great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. The mystery of godliness is a kind of mystery that is recognized in the Bible. Other mysteries include the mystery of the gospel, the mystery of the kingdom of God, and so much more. Another spiritual mystery people have come to ignore and now normalize is the ability to see the Spirit. Many people can see the Spirit through two main channels. 1. From the Devil Acts 16 verse 16 to 18 says, One day as we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a young servant woman with an evil spirit that enabled her to predict the future. She earned a lot of money for her owners by telling fortunes. She followed Paul and us, shouting, These men are servants of the highest God. They announce to you how you can be saved. She did this for many days until Paul became so upset that he turned around and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I order you to come out of her. The Spirit went out of her that very moment. This lady was empowered to see the spiritual realm, not through the power of God. 2 from God. In Acts 16 verse 6 to 10, we see a story in which God allowed Paul to see into the realm of the Spirit. Paul and his companions traveled as they wanted to spread the gospel through every region God would allow them to. The Holy Spirit prevented them from going to some places. But one night, as they went to Troas, Paul had a vision where he saw a Macedonian man shouting, Come over to Macedonia and help us. This was God leading them to go to Macedonia and preach the gospel. Dreaming and visions are powerful ways of seeing in the Spirit. Though many people tend to look down on dreams compared to visions because it seems very common. Though many people tend to look down on dreams compared to visions because it seems very common, dreams are an important channel for seeing in the Spirit. A dream is a vision in which your body is asleep and your soul is completely under the influence of the Spirit birthing that dream. It can be the Spirit of God or otherwise. It is one of the most accurate channels of seeing in the Spirit, since your body and your will are completely out of it. Dreams are guiders. There are different kinds of dreams, such as prophetic and natural dreams. Many people had prophetic dreams in the Bible, but an example of one of them is Joseph. He had a dream when he was a young boy. He dreamt that his parents and elder siblings would eventually bow down to him, and he would rule over them. While this got his siblings angry, he kept these things. He knew one day that he was going to be great, so even during his hard and trying times, he held on to God. Eventually, he became the second in command in a foreign land, and indeed, his dreams came to pass. Visions a vision is a supernatural experience where you are open to the atmosphere and reality of the spirit realm so that you can receive and understand truth. Hence, you see, hear, or perceive as though watching a movie without necessarily participating. We cannot force God to make us see into the spirit. We can only pray to him to empower us with this gift. However, 
It has advantages that become a huge blessing if we adhere to what he is saying. 1. Seeing in the Spirit can help us avoid enemies' attacks. Sometimes, God can show us what the enemy is planning against us through dreams and visions. Then, when we pray, we can divert the enemy's evil plans. 2. Seeing in the Spirit can help us prepare for our blessings. There are times when we need to pray more because of the kinds of blessings that God wants to bring our way. 3. Seeing in the Spirit gives us an insight to what will happen next. Just like Daniel, Isaiah, and some other prophets, seeing in the Spirit can be beneficial not just to us, but to generations unborn after us. When these things are documented, they can become guides for those who need them. 4. Seeing in the Spirit helps you know God's will concerning a certain issue. It is possible to see in the Spirit when we do the following. 1. Have a genuine desire to please God. There is no point in God showing us anything when He knows we will never obey His will for our lives. It is like a waste to God. When we have a genuine desire to please God, God can give us the gift to see because He knows it will benefit us. 2. Living life because of God's Word. God's Word shows us how to behave. Therefore, when we choose to live a life that is pleasing to God by following His ways, He will most likely give us our heart's desire. 3. When we live a life of consecration and holiness, this is one of the major reasons why so many people cannot see. Holiness is not self-righteousness. In truth, only God is holy. But through the work of Jesus on the cross, we have also received holiness. While it is good to stay away from sin, it is not what makes us holy. We are holy because God has made us holy. So in the state of holiness, we consecrate ourselves to God we ensure we don't think or behave the way the world does. 4. Have a personal walk with God. We shouldn't just fellowship with the brethren alone. We must spend time praying, studying, and worshiping God. The more we do this, the more our eyes and the Spirit will be opened. We must never ignore the place of spending time with God. 5. We must honor those who have the gift of seeing in the Spirit. Hebrews 7 verse 7 says that the lesser can receive from the greater. This is a spiritual and even a physical principle. If you have, you can give to others. But if you don't, it becomes impossible to help even if you desire to. Honor is a strategy that can be used to receive something that you don't have. There is something called impartation. For example, a teacher can impart knowledge to students. In the same way, someone with the gift of sight or seeing can also impart this spiritual possibility to another person. 6. Don't doubt. You must believe that you can receive the gift of sight. You must believe that the Holy Spirit can and even wants to give it to you. If you don't believe, you may never get to have this gift. On the other hand, your confidence in God shouldn't dwindle because you are yet to see this gift at work in your life. Make sure to give thanks to God always. You may not see it yet because God is trying to prepare you to be strong and mature enough for this gift. When you practice all of these, you can see in the realm of the Spirit. We should remember that there is a lot of spiritual mysteries in this world, and one of them is the mystery of seeing in the Spirit through the channels of dreams and visions. So let us pray to God to enable us to walk in this reality. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you and God bless you.